So multiple choice question one for unit number three is it is saying a random survey, a random sample of University of Manitoba students is asked whether their parents have a university degree. What is the population of interest for this survey? So we need to find out that what is the population for this survey in which the students were asked that whether their parents have a university degree or not. So all University of Manitoba students. So what is the population? The population is the entire number of people whom which our consideration is being done. So basically they are asking a random sample of universities of Manitoba students. So they are asking this question to all the students of University of Manitoba. So this seems to be a correct answer. Let's read the next options. All University of Manitoba students whose parents have a university degree know because they're asking this question that if they have a university degree or not. So they don't know before asking it whether they have or not. So this won't be the correct answer. All parents, so no parents can't be. All parents, no parents can't be. All University of Manitoba students who were included in the sample, no. Sample will be the students whose university, whose parents have the university degree. So first of all, the population is all students of the university. When they will ask this question to all students of the university, then they will like, get the sample of some of the students whose parents have university degree. So sample is the students who have, whose parents have university degree, but population is all of the students. So the correct answer is option number A. Okay, correct okay. answer is option number eight. It is all University of Manitoba students. So now you know how to decide what is the population. Population is basically the number of people or people of interest to whom the question is being asked from where the sample is being collected. The sample is being collected from all of the students of the University of Manitoba. Now, next question is consider the following three situations. Jim phoned a number he saw on the sixth news to respond to a survey question. The first situation is that Jim phoned a number he saw on the six news to respond to a survey question. Second situation is Natalji hang up the phone when she heard the person calling was from a polling firm. Third situation is Matthew had no chance of being included in the phone survey because he doesn't have a phone. So there are three situations. In the one situation, Jim has phoned someone in the second situation, Natalie, who hung up the phone and who did not respond to the phone call. The third situation, the third person, Matthew, did not have any phone. So the type of bias present in these three examples are respectively. So what is a biasness present in these? So basically, in the first situation, Jim phoned a phone number. Jim has done a phone call to a number. So it means if he has done a phone number, and six news and respond to a survey question. Also, he respond to a survey question. So it means it is voluntary response. Remember, we study voluntary response in our last lesson. And what is this voluntary response? That if someone called someone or someone asked someone a question and that person answered the question. So it means it is a voluntary response. In the second situation, Natella hung up the phone. So it means Natella does not respond. So Natella do not respond. To the survey question because he hung up so it does not respond what matthew did matthew had no chance of being included in the phone survey because he does not have a phone so matthew is not included in the survey basically it is not included in the survey so let's do first one is voluntary response the first one is correct second one is under coverage under coverage means that is not included in the survey but the second one is included in the survey but it does not respond so this is not the correct answer Second option says convenience sampling. This is not the correct answer. Third option says voluntary response. Yes, the first one is a voluntary response. Second one is non-responsive. Yes, do not respond. So second one, Natella, do not respond. So she hung up the phone means she knows that someone is calling her on the phone, but she does not respond. So this is correct. Third one is under coverage. Under coverage means that we cannot cover these people because this person do not have a phone. So if I don't have any phone, so the people, the uh, firm, appalling firm who is calling all the people who have the phone, they cannot cover me. So it means I'm under coverage. I can, they cannot cover me because I don't have the phone. 
So option C is the correct answer because it is giving the right answers. So see, this is very easy. We have studied all these things in the morning in the last lesson that what is voluntary response when someone answers to a question. What is hung up means that they're not responding and if one is not even added in any survey, it means it is not included or under coverage. So option C will be the correct answer for this question. Any conclusion up till now? No. So for first one, the answer is option A and second one answer is option C. Okay, scroll down to come to the question number three. Okay, next two questions, three and four refer to the following. So two questions refer from the following information. Former Manitoba Pr Premier Gere Dor later served as Canadian ambassador to the United States. His office commissioned a telephone survey in order to study the relations between the people of the two countries. So they have done a telephone survey between the people of the two countries. Now what is happening is a simple random sample of 20 people was conducted, contacted from each of the 50 American states. So there were how many states? 50 states and 20 people from each state were contacted. Respondents were asked whether they have a favorable opinion of Canadians. Okay, so now question number three is, the population of interest in their study is, now tell me, what is the population of interest? A very easy answer. Because there are 50 states in the America and they're talking, taking the, a person from every state, so all Americans are the population of interest in their study. Population is the main thing from which we have to take the sample. So we are taking the sample from every state of the America. So there are 50 states of America, so all Americans are the population. Very easy. Okay, next question is, the resulting sample of 1,000 Americans is, what is 1,000 Americans resulting? Is it a, a multi-stage sample? There is no stages in this. Is there a stage? There's one stage, one, two, three, no stages. So it can't be a multi-stage sample. It is a simple random sample. No, they are not randomly picking anyone. This is a convenient sample. No, this is a systematic sample. No, this is a stratified sample. Stratified sample means that they have 50 states and they keep 20 people from every state. So this type of sampling is called stratified sample. You can also study the definition again from the notes, okay? So question number three is all Americans population is very easy and the thousand Americans that this study has come from the stratified sampling. Okay, come to question five. Okay. So a simple random sample of size N is the only type of sample that guarantees that. Now, we have simple random sample that is called SRS. The size of the sample is N, is only type of sample. This is the type of sample that guarantees any one thing. Which thing that is guarantees? Which thing this sampling guarantees? Now we are going to study this. Every individual in the population has a known chance of being selected into the sample. So every individual, do every individual has known chance? Second option is that every individual in the population has an equal chance. There is a word known chance, there is a word equal chance. Every group of any individuals has an equal chance of being selected into the sample. Results will not be biased, all of the above. So in option A, they're saying every individual in the population has a known chance, so it is not necessary that everyone is known to us. Equal chance, so it is not necessary that they have equal chance because in simple random sample, we have small groups and from every group, we are taking one, one person, for example, or two persons, for example. So there is there are not equal chances for every person. Every group of individuals has equal chances. Every group has equal chances, but overall, they do not have the equal chances. Every group there, we are picking two persons. So every group has equal chances, but overall, they don't have the equal chances. So option C will be the correct answer. Now, are you understanding what is simple random sample? Simple random sample is a sample that guarantees that every group of N individuals has equal chance of being selected into the sample. So this is very important. This is kind of the definition of simple random sample. This is a kind of definition for simple random sample that every group of N individuals has an equal chance of being selected for into the sample. You can even write this definition so that because it will be used in more questions again. Simple random sample guarantees that every group of N individuals has an equal chance of being selected into the 
important is every group of an individuals not every individual every group of an individuals this thing is very important you may write it somewhere because it will be used in next questions also okay. Okay, there are 100 professors in the faculty of science at large university. The number of professors in each of the six departments is summarized in the table below. Department, Biology, Chemistry, Computer Science, Math, Physics, Statistics, and number of professors. So, there are 20 professors for Biology, 10 for Chemistry, 20 for Computer Science, 30 for Math, 10 for Physics, and 10 for Stats. The Dean... <clears throat> Dean selects a sample of 20 professors by random selecting four biologists, two chemists, four computer science, six mathematics, two physics, and two statistics. So the dean has selected 20 professors and they have selected in this way four, two, four, six, two, two. Now, is the sample of 20 professors a simple random sample? The question is whether this sample is a simple random sample or not. Now, tell me which will be the correct answer from these four, these five. Read the answers from A to E and tell me which one is the correct one. We just do some, read something about simple random sample in our multiple choice question five, the last one, which I was saying to write you down on the notebook. So it will help you do solve this question number six. So taking the information that we just learned in the last multiple choice question, I want you to mark the correct answer for question number six. A. A is the wrong answer and it is completely wrong. It is not that it is nearly wrong, it is completely wrong. And what is the reason of being wrong? We, that the reason I just told you in MCQs number five. So if you can just understand MCQs number five, you can understand MCQs number six too. I have okay. just told you the reason in MCQs number five. Okay. Checking some of the answer. Just first tell me what did we learn in MCQs number five for simple random sample. We learned one very important point that I told you to write down. Go back and you can see it again even. Thanks, Yes. Read out. There is no proof and visualizing. Yes. So they are saying that simple random sample. What is simple random sample? It is every group of any individuals and that I focus on you, every group of any individual has an equal chance of being selected into the sample. Now come to MCQs number six and see if this is happening or not. B. Sorry? B. B. No. 
so basically the point is that every group of a chance has, does not have an equal chance of being second. See, they are selecting four from biologist, but two from chemistry, then four from computer, then six from math. So they are not getting giving an equal chance of selection from each group. So the, the answer is no. But what is the reason? This is correct. The answer is no. So it means we have two of three options. One, two, three. Now, which one is correct? Yes is not the correct answer. No is the correct answer because there is not an equal chance of being selected. Now, there are three options that are giving no. So, which one is the correct one? A. Sorry? A. E one is the correct. Why? Because no, because not every possible sample of 20 professors has an equal chance of being selected. The first one, the second one says because each professor in the population of 100 professors does not have an equal chance. So this is not the case. Then no, because the population consists of professor in six. So this is not a valid reason. So E1 is the correct answer. Very good. This way you can understand the things. Okay, come to example, question seven. Okay. A production line in a large factory. Now listen carefully. A production line in a large factory produces 20,000 ballpoint pen every day. The company performs quality control inspections to ensure they are free of defects. Each day, they randomly select a sample of 200 pens. To do this, they randomly select one of the first 100 pens produced and then they select each 10th pen produced after that. So at first they select 100 pen produced, then they select each 10th pen produced after death, okay. Oh, sorry, each 100th pen produced after death. Each selected pen is then tested for the quality. Is the resulting sample of 200 pens a simple random sample? Okay, find out the correct answer now. And this is very easy. We just read the one definition in our last lesson and that definition responds to this question. B. Option B. Yes. Now tell me what is the meaning of simple random sample? I told you simple random sample means that we are randomly going to select any number. And in, the, in this example, we are not selecting the numbers randomly. Are we selecting the numbers randomly? No. They said to do this, they randomly select one of the first 100 pens produced and then they select each 100th pen produced after death. So this line is important. This line will tell you which sampling is used over here. We are not choosing simple random sample. I have given you the hint that simple random sample is not used. Uh, multi-stage. Sorry? Multi-stage. Uh, D. Multi-stage. Is there any stages coming? No, there are no stages. Whenever you have that, you have to select each hundredth pen. The sampling is called systematic sampling. This is what we learned in our last lesson. Therefore, I told it the only systematic sampling. Remember, I give you the example of a phone call. That if you have a phone call list on your mobile phone, the phone calls are A, 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 B, B, C, D. And you have to select a few numbers and you said, I will select every fifth number. So one, two, three, four, five, you select fifth. Then you select fifth. Then you select fifth. So whenever you do a sampling in this way, that you select every nth number, they can be fifth number or they're selecting every hundredth number. This type of sampling is called systematic random sampling. So this is the example that we learned in our last lesson. 
the, about the phone call. So here the person is selecting every hundredth pen. So it means this is a systematic sampling. So what is the correct answer? This is a systematic random sample. It is not a simple random sample because not every combination of 200 pens has the same chance of being lucky. So E is the correct answer. There are no stages, so it's not a uh, multi-stage sample. Okay, come to question number eight. Okay, a stratified random sample is selected by. Now, tell me, what is a stratified random sample? We just do a stratified random sample in one of the, like, exam, uh, I think MCQs three or four. We just do it in the last few minutes. random sample is selected by yes what do you think we just do it in exam uh, multiple trials questions three or four this is easy this is grouping the subjects using some criteria with grouping the we first of all group the subjects then randomly select the subjects from each group to interview so this is very easy. Randomly selecting is not the option. Grouping the subject using some criteria, then randomly selecting is not the option. So option A is the correct answer. This is simple stratified random sample is grouping the subjects and then randomly selecting them. This is the case, okay? Okay, okay come to question number nine. Okay, a grocery store employees would like to survey her colleagues about their views on starting a union. One day during lunch, she distributes a questionnaire to all of her colleagues eating in lunch room. The survey asks, given the poor treatment of employers by store management, would you be in favor of starting a union? Which of the following are present in the sampling method? So what of these three? Convenience sampling, leading question, under coverage. These are the three topics that we have learned. So which of three are present in this sampling method from here to here? So read the question again and tell me which of the three are present here. Okay, Um, one and two. One, two, and three. Three of them will be the E will be the correct answer. What? Okay. Okay. For the purpose of Canadian and federal elections, the country is divided into three thirty-eight electoral writings. 14 of which are in Manitoba. In each writing, votes elect one member of parliament to represent them in Ottawa. This a survey is to be conducted to gauge the support of Manitobians for the various federal political parties. Which of the following sampling strategies employs the use of stratified random sample? Now they have already told you that they are using stratified random sample. But they are saying which of the following sampling strategies, which strategy will use stratified random sample? So in the last example, in the MCQs number eight, we studied what is stratified random sample, right? So you, you know what is stratified random sample. You have to select which of the following is using stratified random sample. Okay, take two minutes, try to give the correct answer for this. We have done stratified random sample three times now.
Sí. Sorry. Sí. D. Okay, let's see. Then select a simple random sample. So they are saying stratified random sample we have to select. So slash what is stratified random sample in which there is a grouping? Select a simple random sample of five writings. In each selected writing, select a simple random sample. So they're selecting simple here. Randomly selected is not the option. So select a simple random sample of 100 voters from each of the 14 writings and administrator to survey the survey to them from each of the 14 writings. So first they uh, make 14 groups and then they select 100 voters from them. So this is called a stratified sampling in which we first we make groups and then we select the writings. Select a simple random sample of three writings and survey all voters. Survey all voters is not the option. You're very close. You're very close to the answer, but you're not the correct answer because we have to select from each of them. Selecting all is not the option for the stratified random sample. In stratified random sample, we have to select the persons from each of the group, not all of the voters, okay? So C will be the correct answer. Got it? But you were very close to the answer. Did you understand it? Mm -hmm. Okay, a liberal organization contacts a simple random sample of 500 voters in a province asking them the following question. Given the failures of the current construct conservative government on health care and education, will you support the conservative party in the next election? 34% of those responding are avoiding yes. Which of the following statements are true? Okay, so they asked a question and 34% of the people said yes. So what was your answer? D. D. No, D is not a correct option. Let's see. This survey is reasonably accurate as it is used a fairly large random sample of individuals. This survey probably probably overestimates the true proportion of voters. This survey probably underestimates the true proportion of voters who support the conservative party. This survey is very inaccurate, but neither conservative nor underestimate the true proportion of voters who support the conservative party because the simple random sampling was used. Mm -hmm. The results are unbiased. The results of this survey cannot be trusted as not all votes in the province who are contacted. So, Basically, given the failure of the current conservative government on health, care, and education, will you support the conservative party in the next election? So even though they are, they are saying that it is a failure of the health care, then they are asking whether you will support. So 34% of the people still say that they will support. So basically, the results are underestimate of the true proportion of the voters. They are... Uh, the underestimate, what is the meaning of underestimate yesterday was studied? They did not cover all the waters. It means this is underestimate, that is option C. Okay. We come to the next. The United Kingdom consists of England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. A survey is created to gauge the attitudes of people from the different regions about the United Kingdom's separation from the European Union. Random samples of 400 people in the England, 200 people in Wales, and 300 people in Scotland, 100 people in Northern Ireland are selected. All selected individuals are contacted to respond to the survey. So first of all, they say that they uh, they have 400 people and in England, 200 in Wales, 300 in Scotland, 100 in Northern, and then they take a survey. They combined sample of thousand people is okay so what is the answer for this uh, e. now we just learned in the mcqs number nine i think that whenever there is a grouping like this that they are taking the sample they're they're grouping the people in england then wales then scotland then northern and Certified. Sample d. d yes it's stratified sample that is d very good. Okay. 13. The principal of a higher school would like to conduct a survey of students about the school's extracurricular activities. The principal anticipated anticipates students in different grades, 9, 10, 11, 12, and have different opinions. Which of the following type of sample will provide the principal with the most accurate reflection of students' opinion? E. 
A. But the thing is, they just say that they have divided the students in four uh, four groups, 9, 10, 11, 12. And this is the last definition that we read in our notes, uh, in unit 3 notes. The last definition that when we come, when, we, when the students are divided and we go to each and every student and survey them. I give you the example of the Pakistan, that they just have one thing in the last scenario. Census. In census, yeah, I said, I said E. You said E, okay. Sorry, yeah. I understand E. I, that then it's correct. It's correct. Uh, 14. Okay. Mrs. Marshall wants to select a random sample of five of the 30 students in her class to present their book reports, which are due today. She will number her students from 1 to 30 on her class list and roll a fixed-sided die. She will pick the student corresponding to the number of she rolls and every sixth die. Okay, so this is very easy. She is going to take every sixth student. Yeah, E. Again, say? E. E, Systematic. Yes. Systematic random sample. We're going to take the nth number of students. That is the sixth number of students. Very good. Okay, 15th. A student at a large university would like to estimate a true proportion of all cars in the university's parking lots that are rich. All of the parking stalls at the university are numbered from 1 to 3,000. The student will use computer software to randomly generate a sample of 300 different numbers, 1 to 300. He will check the corresponding number of parking stalls and record whether the car parked in each of them is red. If there is no car parked in the selected stall, he will observe the next lowest number in st of st stall with the car parked in it. Which of the following statement is correct? Okay. Uh, I didn't choose. Sorry? I didn't choose. I couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. So this is an example of stratified multi-state. This is not stratified, not multi-state. This is biased sampling procedure and the student will likely underestimate the true proportion of the cars. Now there are two words used. Either they are underestimating or they are overestimating. There is an unbiased sampling procedure that will likely lead to a fairly accurate estimate of true proportion of the cars at the university data rate. So basically it's not underestimate because they're covering the almost all the cards, that is not overestimate because they're covering a specific number of cards. So the E will be the correct answer. If this is unbiased and they will fairly accurate estimate, they will get a fairly accurate estimate of the true proportion. Okay, six. which of the following statement is false? A simple random sample is not the only type of sample that gives each individual the same chance to be selected. Which one do you select? Uh, e. Good. E is the correct answer. When someone is contacted by a phone for a survey, the person refuses to answer and hang up. This example is of voluntary response. This is not. This example is of which response? In response. This is the example of an in response, not voluntary response. We are going to choose a false statement now. So this statement is false. The correct yeah, one is that this is an in response. This is not a voluntary response. Yeah. Okay. Come to 17. Uh, it's either D or E. The D or E, okay, good. You have chosen two options, let's read out. An inspector for a court company, cookie company, would like to take a sample of the day's production in a factory as part of the company's quality control measure. Which of the following sampling procedure produces a stratified sample? Okay, so in a stratified sample, we know there is a grouping, so let's see. Yeah. Okay. So the inspector selects a random sample of five. So you select D and E. So let's read the two ones. The inspector selects a random sample of 10 craft from the day's production and from each selected craft, he selects a random sample of the packages of cookie. The inspector randomly selects two packages of cookies to inspect from each craft produced that day. Yes, E will be the correct answer. He yeah. has to randomly select two packages from each craft. From each group, they will select randomly one person. This is the 
stratified sample that there will be grouping but you are going to select from each group this is okay. 18 all graduate students in civil engineering plans to conduct a survey of university of manitoba students who are living in winnipeg and <clears throat> ask them whether they regularly use public transport what is the population of interest for this survey b b very good all U F M students who are living in Winnipeg. Good. A pro hockey scout would like to conduct a survey of junior hockey players in the Western Hockey League. The scout selects a random sample of seven of the twenty-two teams in the WHL. From which, from each selected team, he selects a random sample of five players to contact and conduct the survey. The resulting sample of thirty-five players is a dash. Okay. Sorry? A simple random sample. No, not a simple random sample. They are not just, it is not that they are a group of people and they will just go and select one. No. They are saying a pro hockey scout would like to conduct Stratified. a junior hockey. Yes? Stratified. B. No. Listen to me. Hockey players in the Western Hockey League. The scout selects a random sample of seven of the 22 teams in the WHL. So, first of all, they select 7 out of 22. From each selected team, he selects a random sample of 5. And then, so when you keep on selecting from 1, you select, then you again make 2 groups, then again you select. So, when you keep on selected in this form, this is called stages. So, this is called multi-stage sample. Okay, the last one. The next two questions refer to the following. There are 50 states in the U.S. We would like to conduct a poll about a federal election. Suppose we want to select a simple random sample of 500 Americans. This sampling design ensures that. E. 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 All possible samples of 500 Americans have the same chance to be chosen. Very good. Excellent. E. We added 21 as well. Okay. Suppose we want to select a certified random sample of 500 Americans. The sampling mm. design ensures that. B. B. Sample will contain at least one individual from each state, obviously. So this is the question. Very good, Abdullah. Okay. Now, take a few minutes and do from 22 till 32. And then we will again restart them. Okay.